welcome back to another episode of the Pole Dark Dish. I'm Marlies. And I'm Elise. And today we're going to be dishing about Pole Dark episode six. But first, a little recap. Jim, the Cornwall poacher, will be out of jail soon. Ginny has been counting down the days and wonders if he'll be much changed. Francis is silent. He needs to stop. Just stop. He's going to ruin the good name of sexy signing. When Ross comes to see Francis, women everywhere say, take your shirt off and help him sign. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes Ross the signing. God, take off your shirt, show off your bod. Rawr. It's Ross's first copper auction as leader of the smelting company. And the Carnmore Copper Company is kicking ass at the auction. All the other buyers are like, WTF? That Shakespearean hussy craps to Mark that she could have done way better than him. Once he's off to the mines. Hi ho. Mm-hmm, that hoe climbs up a high ladder. And throws herself off. Ooh, you mean she's gone? Nope, she wants to be swaddled in bandages by Dr. Eye Candy. Well, who wouldn't? Take a number, Ho White. Somebody give her poison apple. In town, Miss Syllabubs tattles on Verity to Ross. She spills the beans that Verity's been secretly seeing Captain B. <gasps> Scandalous. Verity tells Demelza that the war leggings are given a ball. And they're all invited. Us too? Oh my god, I know the dancers will bounce the game when they really have his shirt on. Oh my god, I can't wait to see it! Dr. DeWhiteful is patching up the Shakespearean hussy's boo-boo. He tells her to stay in bed. She's thinking that's exactly what I had in mind. Verity and Blamey are holding hands and making plans. But they still have included in Francis. Oh, she promised to do it before the ball. Demelza tells Ross that they've been invited to the ball. But all he wants to do is make out. Ross says that word on the street is that Verity has been hooking up with bad news Blamey again. He wonders how that happened. She's just thinking, shut up and kiss me before, before I, I get, get in, in trouble. trouble. Whiny Francis whinges on about having to go to the ball as a poor man. And the disgrace of his wife having to wear a recycled gown. Verity waits for Francis to be in a good mood. Tell him she's out of there. It's going to be a long wait. There is a fever at the jail. Dr. Eye Candy and Ross head over to help. Meanwhile, the Shakespearean hussy is sniffing around the doctor's door. Demelza tells her to rein it in. People are talking. Ross and Ennis finagle their way into the prison. And they find young Jim at death's door. Verity's going to give Elizabeth's gown a fashion makeover. Liz doesn't care as long as vapid Francis thinks it's new. Verity apologizes to Elizabeth for her brother being such a wanker. Liz says, don't sweat it. We have both learned to lower our expectations. Verity's thinking, yeah, that's what you think, sister. I'm meeting my sailor later. Ooh. Poor Jim Carter dies despite heroic efforts to save him. Poor Jenny's distraught. To avoid spreading disease, Ross must burn all his clothes on the beach. I feel so wrong. Demelza worries that Ross will be in trouble for his actions at the jail. Ross is crying into his ale over not being able to save the poor poacher. Suddenly, a ball gown arrives. It's from Ross! Demelza feels really bad about young Jim Carter and the injustice of it all. But could she please sneak a peek at the ball gown anyway? Verity shows up and says you must go to the ball. Or Ross will be in a world of hurt with Cornwall society. It's Demelza's first ball. And the boys are behaving badly. Ross abandons Demelza to go get smashed. But he did remember to send her a gift, a beautiful necklace. Then Verity sees Blamey. See you later, Demelza. Demelza Melza descends the staircase like Eliza Doolittle at the embassy ball. The men are spellbound. The women are waiting for her to trip down the stairs. Mm -hmm. The powdered wig brigade comes to Ross and talks him into a game of cards. That's not good. Miss Syllabubs is talking smack about the Poldarks. Francis was dumped by Margaret the Hope. And Ross probably regrets marrying that hussy. Elizabeth's mother calls Demelza a scullery maid. You know what we call women like that? It rhymes with snitches. Mm -hmm. Reverend Hulse arrives and joins Ross at the table. Double Poldark moment. Ross reads the Reverend to Phil and pisses him off in the process. That'll come back to bite him mm -hmm. later. George tries to tantalize Elizabeth with his war leg and charms. But Francis is having a good cry in the hallway. He looks up to see Captain Blamey up in his grill. Francis swings for Blamey. Blamey stops him with one smooth move. Blamey turns on his heel. Bye bye Ross is a hot mess. He's blown Demelza off all night. And she's not happy. If you behave like this, you won't come to another one. If you behave like this, I won't want to. Ross is losing his shirt at the card table. Woohoo! Not literally. Oh. He's lost his grandfather's watch. Jamel's necklace. And now he's stayed well leisure. In the final hand, Ross uncovers that Sanson's been cheating all along. They fight. Ross takes him down. And Sanson's wig goes flying. Oh, oh no. In the morning as they're leaving, Ross finds out that Sanson is Warlegan's cousin. Ruh ruh. Faux pas. Mark Daniels asks Ross for help. The whole town is a buzz over his wife's wandering eye. Wandering eye? Her whole body barged its way through the doctor's door. At Jim Carter's funeral, Ross is sober for the first time in days. Demelza tells him to stop fighting the world. You could only make your small corner a fairer place. Let's start with getting my necklace back. And lay off the sauce. Take off your shirt. Yeah. Oh, sad. What a sad episode. This Poor Jim dies. Yeah. And 
this whole episode was such a roller coaster because you've got the the death of Jim and you've got the juxtaposition of the jail and the conditions at the time and then the ball. And, and Ross is so tortured that he can't help these people. I mean, he's just one man. He's just wanting, like she says, you can't save the world. But he is trying to save his people. Right, and yes. And take care of his people. And when he fails at that, he takes it completely really to Really personal. But then it's hard to see him go from this heroic fighter, you know, busting Jim out of jail, yes. working feverishly to try to, to save his life. To drinking and gambling. The gambling bothered me, I've mm -hmm. got to say, and I know he had in his mind somewhere this guy was cheating right. and I'm going to catch him, but, but he, it was so hard to watch. Yeah, but he puts up his grandfather's watch, he puts up Demelza's necklace, and then at the end, when he catches the guy, he doesn't really go back for it. I, right? I don't know. I mean, I didn't I mean, that, see him we didn't get the see stuff that. back. Yeah, so. we didn't see that. And Francis should have his mind back because yes, this guy exactly. is cheat, and I don't know if they go there. Demelza's transformation in this episode is really marked. Yes, well, we see her skills at the piano yes. and everything else, and we see her make her way through society and yes. really hold her own. She's yes. dancing with the landowners. And left by herself for most of the ball. Yeah, you know, at her first ball, Verity but, takes off. Ross takes off. But she's off. able to hold her own, which is beautiful. Have conversation, go yeah. to the dance floor. She gives Miss Syllabugs back a little bit exactly. of what she's getting. So yeah. So yeah. So she, she's her character has really become you know a beautiful, well-rounded character, and you know great, great mistress of of Nampara. But then you see the other women. You know, poor Jenny with no uh, Jenny. no husband. No, yeah, Jenny with no husband now. And a baby, mm -hmm. and a job, which yes. is not easy back then. But and you see Karen, the Shakespearean hussy. The Shakespearean hussy going after the doctor now. Oh, the poor doctor. Oh my God, I feel bad for the such doctor. Such a gold digger. I feel bad for Mark because he's so sweet. He's, he's so taming nice. a little bird for her. Yes, I wonder just... if he's going to fall into her her web. The doctor, I think she's yes. just going to take everybody down with her. She is really somebody to watch. So is it time to give some goodies away? Yeah, let's give away some Blu-rays. Okay, we have a Blu-ray to give away. Thanks to PBS Distribution. All of your tweets and comments went in this box and we are going to pull for one today. Good luck everyone. Who do we have? Songbird at Miosotis83. Oh, congratulations. Uh, love, love, love your recaps. My mama too. She's been having fun watching Poldark as well. Oh, Yay! that's nice. Yes, the whole family can watch. That's awesome. Congratulations. Your Blu-ray will be on its way to you shortly. All thanks to PBS Distribution. So thank you once again, all of you, for watching this week. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. At Anglophile TV. Hashtag Poldark Dish. Or leave a comment under this video. Yes, and your name will go in the bucket for next week when we're going to pull for two Blu-rays and one DVD. Anyway, that's all we have for you this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Marlise. And I'm Elise. And we're the, the Poldark, Poldark Dish. Dish. We want rods. Yes, we do. We want rods. How about you? Rawr.